Hi, everybody. Today we're at the Steve Trailer Talk episode number six, and we have David Hendrickson and Linda Stockholm with us with their 21C that they bought in 2021. And David has made a bunch of modifications to this trailer. And David also appeared with us in the rally. So there's a video link that Harrison will drop in in there for us. And uh, so welcome, guys. Well, thanks for having us. You're very welcome. It's um, it was really cool. I know we were talking about Mexico there just a few seconds ago before we before we get going. I mean, sometimes I think I should just start recording from the very beginning and capture all the early conversations. <laughs> love, but all the bloopers, yeah, all the bloopers. But maybe we'll maybe we'll do that in, in the future. But we were just talking about Mexico there and how I know there's a bunch of folks, um, certainly from this side of the this side of the country, you know, the west the west coast side of the country. We sort of make some pilgrimages down to uh, Cabo area, sort of on a an annual basis. And I know you guys have some affinity with that area as well. And you of were course. talking about you were talking about wanting you were, you were talking about you know something you might like to do, which is to go down there, you know, have a bit of yes. a pilgrimage down there. And I I'm like a part of me would go, yeah, I'd be in for that too. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, I can I can see a whole bunch of uh, escapes. Uh, actually escaping <laughs> yeah. and head crossing the border. But uh, like I was uh, discussing with you earlier, I, I just really want to do it with uh, two or three traders just to have some, uh, you know, some security if along the way somebody breaks down, uh, you know. Camaraderie. Yeah. yeah more fun. Yeah. More fun. And preferably somebody you like. Yeah. <laughs> you want you want to come? Pick and <laughs> I'll come along. It, would, it wouldn't take much to convince me to get on the road. You know, okay. right now, you know, and we're we're itching. We're really looking for an opportunity to, um, you know, to get down into the states. I mean, I, oh, man, I, I think I have a funny feeling they're not going to open the borders here until September time. I expect oh, wow. they're going to they're going to hold off until, um, you know, pretty much the kids are back at school and there's not much people moving around. And then yes. they're uh, and then he'll probably open the borders. But you know, even then, Sharon and I are still thinking. Oh, September's still a beautiful time to. Yeah, well, when you when you do, we'll meet you at Sumas. Yeah, <laughs> make the trip from there. You know, I could. Do it. I would love nothing more than to head down, head down the Baja, and mm. um, you know, do a few weeks down down there. You know, January is usually great for that. Down there, it's not so hot. Yeah, we go we go usually in February, and we just see all kinds of people from Canada. Yeah, because you know they're getting they're escaping the cold just like we are. Yeah, and, and that's rain. whale season there too. That's right. Yes. Yes, it is whale season. I remember being down in I remember being down in Cabo Pulmo and it was one of those sort of um early morning ones where I I know you're a photographer, David. One of those early mornings where I was up to watch the sunrise over the Sea of Cortez, which is just the most mm-hmm. beautiful experience ever. And I remember being I remember looking out and seeing all this um jumping going on in the water. And I remember thinking mm-hmm. to myself, oh, is that whales? Oh, it'd be so cool if I could see some whales. And I had my camera. I can't remember how big my lens is, but it wasn't that it wasn't that big, obviously. Um, and I could just about make it through the camera, but it wasn't whales. It was um, it was Ray. It's like Ray, yeah. yeah, all <laughs> jumping out of the water and flapping on the water. Yeah, their, their wings they they slap the water. They slap the water. I remember looking at this for the, you know must have been half an hour, two quarters of an hour, just mesmerized yeah. by. I mean, I love nature, right? So purely, yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing. I think they're exciting bait or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I'd heard it was something to do with bugs and parasites, but who knows? Yeah, who knows? Right. Sometimes at the internet, you don't know what you're reading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As like well. they say in Mexico, he's okay. He's, he's okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. So maybe we'll try and make that out. So I think what we'll do, we'll re- we'll reach out to people, um, but maybe we'll put it out there in some way and try and find out. Is anybody interested in a bit of a um, a bit of a pilgrimage event? You know, zipping down oh, the yeah. at some time. Maybe get yeah. a get a, a few people i know um and i think it was last year the year before there was a group that head down from went down from bc and they chronicled their journey oh, oh. and it was i can't remember the chap's name i'll go and find out and i remember he presented at one of the rallies in the u.s and i'm thinking it was that one in arizona um and he presented to a bunch, of, a bunch of a bunch of escapees, you know, his journey and how he prepped for it and, and got everything ready. So we'll find out who that was, and I think we'll share that amongst ourselves, and maybe we'll get something, something get something organized, and that'll give me a taste of what retirement might actually look like when we get there. Yeah, yeah. You can show I'll me take the you under my wing. I'll exactly. take you under my wing. I'll, I'll show you what retirement is like. <laughs> oh, don't show me too much. I might be. Uh, I might make the jump real fast. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you did the rally video. So actually, there's a couple of things. One, I know, obviously, your photographs are great. And I know um, you're pretty active on the Escape Travel Trailer page <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah it's great fun. It's great fun. I enjoy that. Yeah, they're, they're a wonderful bunch of people. I mean, it's a really, you know, generally a really positive, happy uh, space to be in. Right. Not is. all of Facebook is like that, or not no. all of social media is like that. But I think the yeah. guys do a really good, or everybody does a really good job on that page of just trying to be um, as peaceful and happy and as much as they helpful. can. And helpful. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, really very helpful. So in yours, I mean, I know one of the key things, of course, David, with your with your configuration is that you're towing okay. with the, you're towing with your Toreg, correct? Your vehicle Toreg, right? And um, and weight is your biggest one of your big concerns. I won't say your biggest concern, but yeah, I, I, I try to comply with what Volkswagen wants me to do in case there's any issues down the road. It's you know, it's not going to be on me, right? Right. And is it a three and a half liter diesel you have? It's the actually, it's a three, three point oh, liter three. diesel. Oh, the three liter diesel. Wow. Okay, good. I know it's they have a V6. Great, yeah, I know that V6 has some great towing capacity in it. Yeah, it does. It's a uh, 7,700 pounds mm. and it's uh, 616 uh, pounds uh, tongue weight, right. which is in which is interesting. If you do the math, the Europeans, uh, uh, the Germans, uh, their tongue weight uh, projection is 8%. So it's a little bit under what uh, we mm. consider in 10 to 10 to 15. Because mm. if you take if you take the 7,700 pounds and divide that by 8%, it is exactly 616 pounds. Don't wait. Right. Right. I have I have seen differences in and I think it's more in the Mercedes, but I've seen differences between the specifications they post for the European versus the North American, and yet it's the same uh, same vehicle. Same car. Yeah. 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 Same vehicle, which is an interesting, interesting one. So you did a bunch of you done a bunch of stuff in your trailer, uh, both for weight saving and for to enable you to know what your weight is. Correct. Um, and we're going to, and Harrison will work on the, uh, you, uh, thank you very much for all those photographs and what you did for us in the rally. And Harrison is going to interject or kind of throw these into the, um, into this uh, talk as we're going along here. So okay. maybe if you could take me through, take me through some, and maybe start at the back of the vehicle, work sure, your way, sure. work your way sure. um, back through. So I know you have that, um, that hitch with the dial on it. So the back of the vehicle, um, I have, um, try to remember what I do have. It's a, it's called a weight safe hitch. It's a, it's a real nice hitch. Uh, it's uh, made out of two pieces of aluminum bar stock. Looks good. It's solid. And it's totally adjustable. You can adjust the, uh, the rise and the drop. And there is a, a, a scale, a built-in scale. So you can actually physically look at that scale and see where you are with the tongue weight. And if you're kind of way out of the ballpark, you know, you can, I can adjust easily with uh, the amount of water I have in the freshwater tank uh, right. where I where I distribute the load within the trader. So it's uh, it's working out really well. Uh, I feel zero bounce, you know, porcasine in the car. The you know, Touring has pretty stiff suspension to begin with, and uh, it's it's smooth. It's just like uh, just driving down the road without the trader. Mm. Uh, Linda, Linda can sleep along the way, so it doesn't wake Perfect. her up. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's really good. <laughs> now, of course, you can have a... Um, you can't have a weight distribution hitch or an anti-sway system on a standard sort of anti-sway system on with the, yeah. um, the chassis that's in your in your car. Yeah, that, so you found some novel solution. I did. Um, the reason I can't use a weight distribution hitch, the car doesn't have a traditional frame hmm. like you would have in a pickup truck. It's unibody. So if you can, you know, you've heard of the beer can effect where you can you can take a beer can and do this, and eventually it's gonna it's gonna just break. Uh, that could happen to the to the car, so uh, you can't use the weight distribution hitch. That's why I have the weight safe hitch itself. Then it kind of snowballs, and of course you can't have the uh, the arms that uh, that distribute the weight to mm. the uh, front of the car. So, uh, and those arms typically have your sway as part of your sway system. So all of that I, I can't I don't have. So I had to find a workaround for the sway control as well. And Lippert makes a uh, electronic uh, sway device where there is a motion sensor, and when the uh, motion sensor uh, picks that up, it uh, it actually applies to uh, trailer brakes. Mm. And it's just like if you were driving down the road and you and you hit the old Jesus button, 
and uh, all of a sudden everything gets straightened out. So that's how it works. Hmm. Hmm. How do you find it? I know we talked about this at the rally, and Harrison will post up some some pictures of the underside where you see that where that sensor. Is. Yes. Um, but how? So how have you found it at that low and high speeds? Any sort of um, working flawlessly for you? Any kind of? You know, Carl, I have to be honest with you. I haven't encountered any sway yet. Hmm. So I'm hoping it works. <laughs> How's that? You because know, the 21, 21C is a good is a good trailer for that because a lot of the weight of the 21 or the 21, 21 Classic is um, is well balanced up front. Most of the weight is, and, and people, the tendency is to load up the bed with stuff when you when a person is traveling, which tends to yeah. keep a, keep keeps good hitch weight hitch weight on the trailer. Of course, you have the um, you have the dial there for for measuring it, and that's um, and that's a huge factor when it comes to sway. Yeah, our first our first big trip that we took, we took a three week trip uh, leaving here, and then we went down through Oregon to uh, Crater Lake. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, before Crater Lake Park, we went to uh, Mount Hood and down to Crater mm -hmm. Lake. So a lot of the route, we were going along the Columbia Gorge, the Rogue River, then back up the coast. Mm -hmm. And we had wind. Yeah. We were passing trucks. Right. I mean, we're, it yeah. was normal driving. We didn't feel any sway. Beautiful. That trailer is rock solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did say, I've, I, I've, I've, uh, I've been on that road on my motorcycle when I went down to, I did a big trip down the, Oregon coast all the way down and then we cut sure. across uh, actually when we went we went down and we cut across um, earlier and then we when we came back we went back up through the Redwood area you mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Eureka I guess it was Eureka and we came yeah. back yeah. up from I think we, had, we hit Mount Shasta at some point but I think it was been on the way across from Reno we, we went to Shasta and I think we went across to Eureka and then we worked our worked our way up and um, yeah I remember going across that bridge at Columbia, uh, over the Columbia River. Yeah, that's a tall yeah, one. That's a <laughs> I got I got to tell you a story about that one. Uh, there's a bicycle ride from. Uh, it's an annual bicycle ride. It's called the Seattle to Portland. Mm. It's uh, we leave Seattle and you pedal all the way to Portland. It's right. 200 miles. Yeah, yeah. On a bicycle, and you have a choice of doing it in one day or two day. And I've I've done it uh, a couple times on my single bike and on my tandem uh, in one day. And yeah. the bridge is the bridge is part of that. Uh, Oh, wow. wow. And when you're when you've already driven about 190 miles and you see that bridge staring at you, it's like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was terrified going across that bridge on the motorbike. I was like, I've no idea what winds we're gonna hit on this uh on this bridge. Going yeah, across. Yeah. Not a big bike, it's a big heavy bike, right? It's not it's it's a big adventure bike, you know, it's uh at that time. But man, I remember that I remember that bridge being like Bit of scary looking bridge and quite a windy area. So I, I I see what you mean on the windy on the windy side. We were out up the yeah. we went up to Whistler there last week. Uh, we didn't have that much wind, but it's the same thing. The trailer pulls just beautifully. And another thing to uh, to stability. When I first started looking at Escape, I was convinced I was going to have the high lift package, mm. and uh, I opted out of it. Mm. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a retired truck driver, so I've I've driven a lot of tall rigs, mm. and. Uh, you know, give me a Porsche 911. I want something down low. It just, it just gives you more stability. And, yeah. and also, I, I got to thinking about it. Okay, my, my SUV has, I don't know, let's say it has 10 or 11 inches of clearance. So what good is it going to have if my trailer is three feet in the air? If I, if I can't get over a bump with my car, the trailer's not coming with me. True. True. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, talking about bike rides, Sharon and I did that bike ride from... Um, so my, you know, when I was with my last company I was with or part of, um, we organized the ride to conquer cancer. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, so we raised, we raised like 80 grand or something. And it was a cycle from, we cycled from Vancouver or Surrey, I guess, down to Seattle, just north of Seattle. So okay. that, and that was a I can't remember, that must have been a couple of hundred kilometers. So a couple hundred kilometer ride, not a couple hundred miles, but only, only a couple hundred <laughs> kilometers. Yeah. And uh, that was a two day affair, but they used to always have it in June. June, it, yeah, I think it was around Father's Day, they used to always have it. And it okay. rained every year. Oh, like, of course. It, like, it was like, and, and part of me was kind of going, well, you know, sure, we have to endure a bit of rain, but it's nothing like the suffering that people endure when they're going through cancer. So, you know, maybe this is just a little there. bit of like, you know, there you well, go. here's the full experience for you. You know, it gets saturated, it saturated. I remember going down Chuckanut Drive. Sorry, Chuck, yeah, Chuckanut, yeah. which is just in Bellingham. 
and it's sort of quite a mountainous sort of run down. It was it was a side road. It wasn't the it wasn't I ninety five, and um, or I, yeah, and going going down chucking it, and it was raining so heavy that we couldn't see through the. You, you had my glasses on. I had to pull my glasses up because I couldn't see through them anymore. It was just sure. raining so heavy, and we couldn't see the road. <laughs> there was that much water on the road. It felt like you were just you know almost skating down the hydroplane, skating yeah, down to well, the bench. Sure. Here a week ago, Lynn and I, we uh, went, we spent uh, three or four nights at Larrabee State Park, which is right on Jackanet Drive, right south of Bellingham. Yes. And yeah. as you recall, it's quite mountainous, if you yes. will, coming yeah. around there. And I'll tell you what, um, there wasn't a lot of room for that trailer. I mean, <laughs> we got we got through it, but I sure would want to pull a 35-footer through there. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I know that road. It's a tight that's a tight area. Gosh. Oh, it is. It's like it's like going to the uh, highway to the sun in, in Glacier National Park. Yeah. I mean, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of fun, right? All is memorable. Um, always very That's memorable. Right. Bill's, Bill's character, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Resilience, character. And Sharon, <laughs> like so Sharon. So I was a I used to be, obviously, I was uh, you know, when I was a lot a lot slimmer. I used to be, I was quite a big cyclist. I was quite a tall cyclist, but I was quite—I was quite—I quite enjoyed a lot of a lot of road cycling, um, mm-hmm. and so I was quite used to cycling. But I, I somehow convinced Sharon to do the ride as well, and she's not a cyclist at all. <laughs> and I don't know how I convinced her. In fact, there's a funny story, and I'll, I'll, I, you know, I'm going to get this for the rest of my life now because <laughs> she doesn't have a memory like an elephant and you know she makes sure she tells everybody else just in case she ever forgets but i remember <laughs> one, it was a christmas before the ride and i um i bought her a christmas present and i remember saying to her oh it's like she goes like what is because i'm i'm great i'm like i don't want like i'll wait till christmas morning i think they can be all Chris presents can be under the tree. They can be whatever, you know, when we, you know, especially when we did it with the kids. And it's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'll wait until Christmas morning. I don't want to know. I have no interest. It's great. I'll wait until that time. Of course, Sharon's the office. Sure. She bursts. She can't hold the secret for more than 10 seconds. She's shaking the package, right? <laughs> she wants to know what everything is. So she's drilling me for information on this. And I went, I went ding, 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 ding. Right. And then she was thinking, oh, it's a ring. <laughs> <laughs> The rhymes, of yeah, course. yeah, and it wasn't. It was a bicycle. <laughs> mm. so it had a, it had a bell on it. Yeah. It had a bell on it. So the bicycle, and I bought a bell, and it was kind of like that movie Family Man, you know, ages and ages ago with Nick Cage, where you yeah, know yeah, he yeah. gets a glimpse of what a possible future might look like, and he has a you know the daughter. He buys a bike for the daughter, and he has a bell, and she takes the bell <laughs> off him, and all this type of thing. So, I, so that was kind of my idea, and it was you know it was supposed to be very. Well, in my mind, anyway, it was very romantic, but oh yeah, but it wasn't. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't a vacuum cleaner. It wasn't a vacuum cleaner. You know, I haven't, uh, I haven't made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too functional. This is the problem. Anyway, she and she she did the ride. I think she enjoyed the ride. Uh, at least she can think about it sort of going forwards. But but now she's no problem <laughs> jumping on a bicycle as long as it's a comfortable bicycle. And doing a bit of cycling, so that's kind of the key Speaking thing. Speaking of bicycles, I uh, the last video with Derek and uh, Nancy, there was a little yes. image of your twenty one NE. That bicycle rack that you have in the back of that thing, that thing is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big bicycle rack. Um, I pulled. Yeah, uh, I was worried about it. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> yeah. I would tell you why I was worried about it because on the way up to Whistler, I have it on the back and I, I put a, um, basically I made a triangle out of it and I secured it back with a, a ratchet strap back to the frame. <clears throat> so to pull, to pull everything back up. But man, I had to, you have to, my favorite, one of my favorite um, features on the, on the trailer course is the, is the rear camera. I like to know what's behind me. And I like to know if I'm leaving anything on the road that I shouldn't be leaving on the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's the other part. But all I could see was that bike rack doing this. Oh, wow. Bouncing around on the, on the back. So I think I need to, um, I think I need to change that out going forward. <laughs> well, I just ordered one. It's called uh, One Up. It's made in the uh, United States. Uh, I got a tip from uh, David Flater. David Flater uh, lives in uh, B.C., and uh, we become friends on the uh, through the escape page. Uh, he's got the same trailer, the 21C, 
He's got the uh, the, the Touareg, and we both like photography. So, right. anyways, he gave, he gave me a recommendation on a bicycle rack, so I've got one ordered, and it's designed for RVs. It's you know we're, we're knuckles. Mm. It's reinforced. Mm. It's not cheap. It's about seven hundred bucks, but. Mm. But, you know, if you're, you know, if, yeah, if, if you're carrying a bike that's a couple of grand, then you don't want it on the ground. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my carbon fiber bike is $5,000. So, right. So, you know, exactly. 700 bucks for a bike rack, I guess it's okay. It's, yeah, it's a good, good insurance <laughs> in that way. <laughs> Yeah. So let's work, let's work our way back through the rest of your trailer. But I am interested in, in in sort of asking questions or understanding at least when you went through the build process, who sure. who did what? So were you involved at all, Linda, or was it all David? Ninety nine percent was David. <laughs> he did all the research. He knew what he wanted. Trailers is foreign to me. Yeah. Camping yeah. is foreign to me. And so, yeah, I left it up to somebody who had done the research, <laughs> what he wanted. And, you know, once he makes up his mind that that's what he wants, he's going to get it. <laughs> but Carl, I'm like you, I'm colorblind, so she oh. did all the interior. <laughs> Perfect. That's the way it should be. In a way, that's the way it should be. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 I just, yeah, I'm just saying, I just, I just love whatever Sharon chooses. That's great. We'll just go with that. Smart, smart man. It works. It works out pretty good for me. <laughs> Except <laughs> bicycles. <laughs> Probably just buy bicycles for Christmas. <laughs> so that's that. So then, you know, as we work our way back through, I know you made some, obviously you've made some modifications in the kitchen. Uh, I you did. You have an electric heater in place as well. And of course you have your pull-out toaster oven or convection oven mm-hmm. in there, which looks pretty cool with your handy dandy little um, uh, security device. Mm. Oh, you? Yeah. <laughs> in there (laughs) oh and of course something that's getting a lot of attention is your cooktop okay as well so i'd like a little bit know a little bit more about your your cooktop and your um your underslung should we say convection toaster oven oh okay um we'll start with the cooktop um i don't know if harris is going to put the image on there but uh uh the um the counter you know i received it from escape uh as a total smooth counter mm. and i uh, i cut the hole for it mm. myself and set it in and i i didn't secure it so it's, it's heavy enough it just drops in and then i have uh underneath of that i have a gas line with a quick disconnect mm. shut off valve mm-hmm. and that appliance my cooktop my gas cooktop as well as my breville oven are just in there so I can take both of those units outdoors because it's called camping, right? right. So I want to yeah. be able to cook outside. <laughs> and also, if it's uh, already 80 degrees in the trailer, I'm not going to want to add any more heat. You know? yeah. So yeah. so it's, it's working out really great. Excellent. The cooktop, the brand is called uh, Kitchen in Home. Two burner and gas units, either LP or natural gas, and you can you know switch it off, jet it how you want it. Uh, it did come, it came with... Uh, Natural, I mean, with LP, so I didn't have to change nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the uh, the one burner on the side is a little bit hotter uh, BTUs, uh, and it's got a little cradle that just sets the uh, your walk on. So when I use it for the walk or anything like that, I'm going to take it outside because I just don't want all that heat and steam and everything inside the trailer. But you know, otherwise, you know, it's we use it inside as well. You know, cooking coffee or whatever on the dinner. Linda doesn't want me to cook anything that stinks inside the trailer. So right. now yes. it goes outside. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're kind of pretty much the same. Sharon wants yeah. all pretty much wants all the cooking done outside as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then uh, the uh and then our Breville oven, uh um you prepared the hole for me like it was going to be like I was going to order the convection uh microwave same right. size hole. You prepared that for me. And then I I purchased the Breville and I made a slide out tray for it. So mm. uh, the Breville does give off a little bit of heat because it is a, I think it's 1800 watt oven. Mm. Um, so if we're just doing a bagel or toast for breakfast, we could leave it in there. But if we're going to be cooking something for a long period of time, you know, we can slide it out and it gets a, a chance to ventilate more or we can just simply take it outside. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is so accurate. Uh, but I like it better than the gas oven because uh, you set it and forget it. Basically, you, you put the temperature you want. Pizzas come out perfect. They're not burnt. You don't have the uh, hot spot issues that you do with the gas. So um, 
Yeah, I just uh, I prefer that. I, I love the look of the uh, of the smooth top clash one piece sliding unit that was the option. But again, the gas oven, uh, the gas heating element itself takes up a lot of room. This yeah. just I felt worked out really good. Yeah, I, I'm I, really I, happy. I'm happy with the decision. I I agree. I'm I'm going down the same the same sort of path. There, we kind of started off with the with the convection microwave ovens. And, and some people love them, but I'm I'm a huge fan of the um, of the convection toaster oven. Type well, idea. and the Breville also has an air fryer. Oh yes, that's Harrison. I were just talking about that yesterday. Believe it yeah. or not, he's he's getting himself there. They're sort of they're buying an apartment, and and one of the things that they're looking at is let's just get one of these, you know, air fryer, convection toaster things that does it all. Yes. And, I, and the question I had to him was, does it do it all well? So does it do it, it all well? It, yeah. it really does. It's just like I said, you uh, you set the temperature, you set uh, uh, like the for like a pizza, for instance. You, yeah. you set how large the pizza yeah. is. It oh. a eight inch? Is it a twelve inch? So it adjusts the temperature accordingly. Mm. And the slices of bread. How many slices of bread? How many bagels? Oh. How many? It's yeah, it's amazing. Huh. Yeah. So everything comes out perfect. It's a no brainer. So just push and forget. Food you cold, beautiful. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> no you more burnt toast. <laughs> yep. yeah, no more burnt toast <laughs> overcooked food it's a joke we have at home which is that Irish I call them Irish mammies so the, the oh. you know Irish moms so just Sharon and I are both Irish uh, and Irish moms the, the story goes the Irish moms they just cook everything to death you know oh, really? yeah they cook everything so it's well at least ours did it was like they just cook everything until it's uh, rubbery and bouncy and has no no flavor <laughs> left in it <laughs> so just yeah, turn well, it on. Leave it on forever. Come back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm half Irish. My, my dad used to uh, cook liver. Same way. He, he would he would boil it first to get the blood out of it. And then he would fry it. And it, it tasted like boot leather. Yeah. You can't make it good. Right. That's that's what I grew up on for the most part, with the exception of fish, of course, because my because my dad, you know, we were my dad was a fisherman and so we fished all the time and it was uh we had, oh, we had such wonderful fish, but my dad used to cook the fish a lot of the time, and it was um, it was just perfect. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Never too well done, just like just good enough to just good enough to eat, which was uh, yeah. which is great. But when it came to anything else, forget it. Steak, beef, you know, <laughs> always um, you bounce it off the floor and catch it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, along with the uh, those two appliances, I also have an induction cooktop. Mm. It's a uh, Hmm. It works well too, so oh, I yes. can. Uh, so we we nice. take that outside. I cook my breakfast outside, and yeah. it's another one of another one of those appliances like the Breville. You set the temperature. You can set it by temperature, or you can set it by wattage, and it just holds it, and it's just absolutely perfect. You can you know you can use uh, cast iron, or you can use anything hmm. that's uh, you know ferrous metal. Hmm. Um, it's just it's just wonderful. So. I, I've set my trailer up so I have as many options, if you will. Right. So if we're plugged into shore power, I'm using all electric. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to use my electric mode on my hot water tank. I install the uh, NV uh, radiant wall heater. Mm. That's uh, that's a 450 watt radiant heater. It keeps the trailer warm. So I'm not using any propane okay. whatsoever. Yeah. You know, I'm paying for I'm paying for the park service. I'm that's using fine. it. Yeah. Then if I'm boondocking, then I have another choice. And have we you have, done much? Have, to, have you done much on the boondocking side? We have, we have. I mean, um, not so much boondocking like in BLM lands, or if you will, <laughs> but just uh, going into campsites that uh, aren't serviced. Not the not the full service. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I like it because it gives us more options. We don't have to have it. So if there's nothing available, perfect. Thank you. I'll take it. Yeah. That's right. Now you are one of the ones that we did. You're the early ones, one of the early ones with when I was introducing the lithium batteries side of things, and I had this fanciful idea that I could do three, four lithium batteries in the trailer. And um, I think I stopped. I think you know. I think I might have done one four battery installation, and then a couple of three battery installations, of which you are one of them. Yes. <laughs> at that point and then i very quickly went oh my gosh what have i done here <laughs> i had we obviously we hadn't contemplated all the different configurations that people can get with their dinettes specifically and then um, when the batteries are going in there and then there wasn't enough room necessarily in the in the storage box on some of the other trailers which is where the batteries would go so we hadn't contemplated everything and then we got to the point where like oh we can only do two here consistently yeah. 
through production. You know. Well, actually, when I configured mine, I actually configured it with the U-shaped dinette with that in mind because I knew all my electronics were going to be there. That's right. It was a, it was a continuous uh, U-shaped dinette that yeah. gave you more room to uh, to actually do all that. That's right. And it really, for a lot of people, it really depends on what they put into it. So we'll get them, um, like if you have the inverter and stuff, it just takes up so much more, so much more yeah, space yeah. in there. And then for some folks, it was they wanted to get the lagoon table. So that also the mount for the lagoon table. And I had, all, I had everything. I had all that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I know because I remember. <laughs> I remember the production team coming to me saying, Carl, how are we going to fit all these in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in here. But they managed to get it all in, which is. Uh, well, we're sitting right here now in the, in the, in the area. But we, I've got the lagoon table removed right now, so yeah. this is like our lounge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a huge fan of the lagoon table. The lagoon yeah. table. Now, um, you know, we the you know the trailer, the last trailer I had twenty one NE. I had a, has the Springfield pedestal. Of course, table yeah. in it. But I think I'm going to actually switch it out. I think I'm, I think I'm going to throw the lagoon table in. You know, I'm the same way because you know I got big feet. I'm kicking everything. I, I mm -hmm. just don't like the post. When we get out of the ferry boat, you know, I'm, I'm constantly kicking the the tables in the in the lounge area. I just don't right. like it. Right, oh, that's right. After, there's nothing yeah. here to kick. Yeah, that's right. Because you guys live on an island, which we don't, do. We have, we haven't said where you lived because we don't necessarily want everybody. Oh. <laughs> although that well, I'm proud of it. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're proud of living in Canada. I'm, I am. I'm I just don't. To, uh, I just don't want to tell everybody where you live. You can tell. Well, them. that's fine. No, because I'm an ambassador, so I need to have people know where I live. Ah, there you go. <laughs> so we live on Whidbey Island, which is just a bit uh, uh, the west of Seattle. Everett. And, uh, we have a ferry. We live on the south end of the island, so we yeah. ferry back and forth. But there is a bridge on the north end of the island you can drive off of. Mm. Beautiful mm. place to live. Yeah, it is a gorgeous place to live. You guys are steeped. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's the way to be, without a doubt. <laughs> Gosh, so we've gone through most of those. We've gone through most of those things. What have I missed? Okay, well, the, uh, the the front storage box, I know it's a big one. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, yeah. All this up up front, it, yeah. And then I, then I did a modification or additional uh, situation on our bed, mm. put in a frolly uh, bed system mm -hmm. uh, for for more air ventilation. That's right. And it, 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 it enhanced the comfort of the bed. Did, oh, yeah? did a great job with that. Does it make it a bit salt? Does it, the, it does it have the, the feel, as in the, the, the feel of bed? Yeah, or the, yeah. Yeah, it has that little plastic spring effect thing. Yeah. I don't know that we did a before and after. I didn't. We've never we never slept on it before Without. the modification. Right, but you certainly like it. I mean, it, it yeah. is so comfortable. I mean, I'll come out here in the trailer on a hot night and flip the AC on and sleep because it's just I love it. You know, I've had I've you know that this last week and it might have been that we were up in Whistler and it was just nice and you know and more more relaxing. But I never slept so well as I did in the trailer last week. Oh, I know. I know. You know I'm just yeah. on the on the straight up normal mattress that we have. I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. I actually like to get one made for home. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I also want to add, yeah, we do have the uh, compressor refrigerator. That thing is silent. Oh, right. It is so yes. quiet. So any anybody that has any apprehension about uh, noise, noise in that unit, just it, it's a non-issue. Mm. I mean, it's just like uh, it doesn't make much more noise than the uh, Max fan, actually. Oh, I mean, it, it is just pleasant. It's pleasant. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, maybe I'm a bit odd, but I actually I enjoy the um, I enjoy fan noise at nighttime. Yeah, you know, yeah, the white noise. White noise. Yeah, yeah. yeah that white noise kind of drowns yeah. out anything on the outside. Yeah, yeah. but for us on the compressor refrigerator, the selling point was uh, we do live on an island. And we do um, go on ferry boats, and of course, you have to shut off propane. Propane. Yes. Or you're on ferry boats, or even going through some tunnels. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just a uh, it takes so much less energy, yeah. you know, when you're on the 12 volt because mm. the compressor refrigerator, of course, as you know, only runs on 12 volt mm -hmm. and it's just a fraction of the energy. So we're very happy with that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You're a second. So Johnny Hong was on, I had Johnny on, on um, a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah. A couple, yes. a couple of weeks ago, same thing, you know, with his, um, he replaced his domestic with his, with a compressor refrigerator and just loves it. Of course, yeah, he's, of course he's got, as he calls it, an obscene amount of energy storage. In his yeah, yeah, I was I was teasing him here a while back. I was asking him <laughs> when he was going to install the uh, Bosch dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have had folks ask me about that. <laughs> I've had folks ask me about washing machine tumble washing machine tumble dryer, and, yeah. and I've had folks ask me about dishwashers as well. <laughs> I'm like, I don't. I'd love to put one in, but I just don't know where I'd put it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're not that big a trailer. trailer. You know, 
take take <laughs> off the bicycle rack, put a trainer back there. <laughs> That's right. To pull it along with you the also. Wells Cargo. You all you also did a Wells Cargo. Yeah. You also did. You changed out the jack on the front for a more lightweight jack. I mm-hmm. did. I did. Yeah. We have, you know, it gets back to the weight issue. The uh, the um, I looked at the power jack, the the escape option. It weighs, I think, it's thirty pounds. The one that I selected weighs uh, 10 pounds. Mm. So that's a 20 pound reduction. Uh, there was a weight reduction in my storage box. Uh, I am going to probably uh, change my uh, propane tanks. There's a company called Viking Propane. And they are uh, fiberglass propane bottles that are designed for the marine industry. And they weigh a fraction of the weight. And not only they are light, they are transparent. So you can you can look through them. You can see the level of propane you have. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm on, I'm considering to upgrade that. to that, and that's going to further reduce some weight. Yeah. Um, so, so doing all that enabled me to be able to carry a generator. I have a, a Honda 22 watt generator inside my storage box. So uh, with all the reductions of weight that I've done, I, I'm able to carry the generator there. And did and you buy that? Out, did you buy that storage box, David, or did you make it? No, I did not. I, I bought it through eTrader. That's right. I forget the brand, but it's uh, it's aluminum, and it's designed for that purpose. It's uh, it's tapered. It's got a tapered shape, yeah. so it sits yeah. right on the, you know, the front yeah. of the trailer on the frame. And there's a couple of plates there welded to the frame where where typically you mount the uh, fiberglass mm. uh, storage box to. I just use that the same spot to to mount it. Worked mm. out quite well. Do you remember how much that cost? So no, the Egans were interested in a storage box. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's. Uh, I'm. I'm going to be communicating with him on that. Are you? you know, I'm, okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it was like the high, somewhere around 200, 200 plus. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. good. Yeah. It's a nice but, vertical box. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. Vertical because the, you know, the bottom area is the same as the top, so you can, it it accommodated the generator really well. Mm. I was able to slide in. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, excellent. Good. Now, as we move forward, anything, um, any any plans for you guys going forward? Here? Yeah. Any, any trips coming up? Oh, yeah, we got trips coming up. We're uh, leaving uh, the end of the week for a week with our granddaughter, then another oh, week oh. in August. And then uh, there's going to be an escape rally here in October on Whidbey Island. Uh, Bobby Mayer is uh, uh, organizing that. Oh, uh, okay. A little, a little uh, teaser on that one. So I think she's posted that, posted that on the uh, forum website okay. so anyways that's going to be like october 3rd i think it is through the 7th or 8th that's at fort casey would be island well the borders are open yeah, yeah. We're way so, down uh, for sure yeah, i know so sharon, gonna, sharon will be involved because we'll, we, we obviously will support the rally so um i'm sure sharon will be involved in getting some some gear organized for that one well that would be awesome be yeah fun. Yeah, so I'll get I'll get her to reach out. That was Bobby Mayer, you said. Yeah, I remember Bobby Mayer. Yeah, and then as uh, far as uh, any future mods, I'm I'm looking at the bed. I want to wall off uh, so I can I can separate the outside hatch area from my storage from the outside. Okay. So I want to have oh, a, yeah, I want to have a vertical wall alongside of the hot water tank all the way forward. Right. So that uh, I can keep. Uh, Keep that area separate. I want to reduce. I want to reduce cold air infiltration, and and for security as well. Yes. Um, and on the on the rear dinette, I, I didn't order any out exterior hatches because I had so many electronics in that area. Mm. Um, there was no need to have the exterior hatches there, and I also felt it was a it would keep the batteries warmer. And that's always a plus for lithium batteries. Yes. So. Yeah. So everything's kind of worked. Everything's working. So based on all of this, Linda, you must, you must, you, you're probably a bit of an expert on trailers now and you don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so, not. <laughs> so unless, unless this is the only time he has these kind of conversations, you must be hearing this quite a bit. <laughs> oh, yes, <yeah>. I do. <laughs> in, in, cam- in camping, like everybody else says, it's a hoot. Like uh, when we were at Larrabee, I just mentioned here a couple of weeks ago, you know, state parks in in uh, in United States, uh, in Washington, anyways, checkout time is one o'clock. Well, okay. my plan was to have everything done and hooked up by by twelve o'clock, so I could run to the beach and, and take a few pictures. pictures. 
Well, I had three individual separate groups of people at the door talking to me about the escape trailer. And they were overlapping each other. Yeah. And I'm going. <laughs> so, 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 Lynn, so Lynn, Lynn is actually breaking down the trailer and getting it ready to leave while I'm, you know. I did learn a lot about jabbering. putting things yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a great way to train people, David. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> a great way that to train. Real <laughs> subtle. <laughs> yeah, I'm like you. I'm not a salesman. You know, I'm just. I'll just give you some numbers and some facts. I, I'm not a sales guy, but you know, I'm learning. <laughs> it's not, and it's like I find out with most with most things. It's not about selling anybody anything. It's it's just about you know, people will make up their own, make their own mind. Oh, sorry, right. make their own choices. They make their own minds up. So exactly. it's like, here's what I've got. Do you like it? Do you want it? I'm happy to make it for you or give it to you. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I have a lot of opinions like everybody else, but what I try to do is I always try to put the why behind my opinion. Right. Like when I post something on the, uh, the escape page or I'll, I'll say this, but I'll say why behind it. A lot, yeah. a lot of people will just, they think uh, only in through their, through their goggles. If, if it works for them, it should work for everybody. But everybody's got a different scenario. And so when I when I uh, show people our trailer, I, I make make it known that there is a 21 NE yeah. available. And I always try to tell them the difference and the pluses and the cons. Uh, if you got a big family, you want the 21 NE. If you just a couple, you know, that super long kitchen and the additional storage, that's the way to go. So always try to give the why behind my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's you know. It's we've chosen this thing and it's our choice. Uh, Correct. Uh, based on our expectations of ourselves. Uh, yeah. The other people yes. have make their own choices based on their own expectations, but that need to be right is, doesn't doesn't need to exist. No. no. And Carl, I can't tell you how many times people say, I never thought of that. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. So again, giving his opinion and why he did what he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is is awesome yeah yeah well i wonder wonderful and we really appreciate it and i know you're an ambassador so if people want to make a nice trip over to whitby yeah. Island, it's a beautiful yeah, it's a place quick, to it's go a quick trip. Yeah. it's a beautiful place to go i'd say you know even if you just make it make it a day trip and go see go see exactly. David. maybe he'll rope linda into the discussion as well <laughs> well <laughs> and you'll only be sitting a, yeah you'll only be sitting a couple hours in the ferry line if it's during the summer mm. Yeah, or drive down, drive down from or the drive north. Down. Or drive yeah. down from the beautiful north. Drive. Yeah, exactly. Come across, yeah. come across. That's right. <laughs> well, listen, guys, I'm going to have to wrap it up. I think it's a perfect way to perfect way to end it. I really Thank appreciate you. you getting on with us here this morning to take us through it. I really hope we can get down to the rally in Whitby there in October. We'll promote that one and get them. I get some swag and get some things organized. That could be the first rally in the states that we actually get to in the last oh, couple of a couple of years. So I'm really, good. I'm really hopeful that that all comes together um, and then of course we're really looking forward if we don't see you then and we don't see you on some sort of trip to Cabo <laughs> potentially <laughs> in the early part of next yeah. year then really um, then we should see you for sure in Osoyas in um, at the end of May definitely okay. I'll definitely get my name on that list next year, and, yeah uh, yeah and you know the, the cool thing about you know your location in Chilliwack what is that like a 20 minute drive across the border or something like that from you guys, or sorry, yeah, from, from Sumas. Oh, from, from Sumas. From, from, we're only exactly. We're only uh, yeah. We're twenty minutes from Sumas. Yeah, and we're and we're about an hour and a half, two hours from from Sumas. So shoot, you know, we can go up there for the afternoon. So, exactly, just come up for a drive. Yeah. <laughs> that, which a lot of people, off. which a lot of a lot of people do. Oh yeah, yeah. Do. wonderful. Thanks everybody, thank and thank you very much, David and Linda. We're Escape Trailer, and we're built, built for you. you. <laughs> 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 That's awesome, guys. Well done.